you need somewhere to store all of your files and correspondence in a project, Microsoft Teams is a great place to do that. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create an amazing project workspace that you can bring your colleagues into that has the ability to track and manage your plan. It also will have the ability to send notifications when new issues or risks are raised on your project, an area for you to file email using Outlook integration with Teams and showing you how to do exactly that and also build out those channels and file structures that can help you and your team share content and make sure it's securely stored as well. And alongside that, I'm gonna also be showing you how you can add and remove people in your project into that Microsoft team, ensuring all of your data is secure and only visible to the right people. So let's dig into it and show you how to create this an amazing workspace in Microsoft Teams. So let's get started by creating our project team using Microsoft Teams. All we need to do firstly is access the Teams app or go via the web. And once you've done that, head down and select create or join a team. Once you're in that dialog, as you can see here on my screen, we can then select on create team and select this button. We'll then be prompted to either create a team from scratch, which is entirely blank and just comes with a general channel and we can customize as much as we would like after that or you can choose from predefined Microsoft templates, being manager project and event and so forth. They effectively come with some predefined channels and apps and tabs to save you some of the headache of getting your team set up. And of course you can select from one of these. But in our tutorial today, we're focusing on creating it from scratch. So I'm gonna select from scratch and now we're gonna set the appropriate security. So will my team be private or public? And that will depend on your own scenarios. For me, private is typically the go-to option here because it means that only authorized people can use your Microsoft team. If you select public, anyone in your organization can freely join or leave, meaning your data is effectively available across the wider business. So I'm gonna go ahead and select on private and then give my team a name. Now, it's important not to get too descriptive here. There's a description box to use to cover off what the project relates to. So I'm gonna actually call the team name, the project name itself, to make it very clear when people are using this team, what it relates to, and use a description field to provide a little bit more context. And there we have it. Now we have our project our team name and a description. I can go ahead and click on Create. And once we do that, it'll then move forward and create our team. As I mentioned, if we're not using a template, it's pretty quick to get our team. It literally takes just seconds. And at this scenario, you could now begin adding people internally. For example, my colleague Adele is helping on this project. I could search for Adele's name, select it from the drop down, and then select add. But because the team is not ready to go, I don't want our team members coming in here and then working in an area that's not yet well structured. In fact, we're gonna go and add people later. And I'm gonna show you how to do that outside of this screen. So let's go ahead and instead click on skip. We're not gonna go and add anyone into our new team. Now from this perspective here, we have our new team for project zero. When you actually create a team, it comes with one channel. That is called general and it cannot be renamed. Sadly, that's not available. It hasn't been for many years in Microsoft. You have a posts area a files tab and also notes. Now the files tab effectively is a folder structure that you can then go and create additional folders. Now it's quite common in projects that documents and in general is not something you're necessarily gonna follow. It might be we're gonna create additional folder structures to make sure people store content in the right way. Much like you do on a file or a folder share. So click on new and then select folder and you can give a folder a new name. For example, I could put one and I could put scoping information. Two, we had some financial information if we would like as our second folder here as well and so forth. And in each of these folders, me and the project team can click into them, upload files from your local computer or create brand new files and documents using the online tools, whatever the preference is. But creating that structure can really help organize your team. Now alongside that, of course, we've created folders here in the general channel for our file storage. But in some stages of your project, such as project stages, you can actually go ahead and create channels. Channels mean that we get a unique channel to store again our file structure and also a dedicated post tab. 
So in this scenario, if I go to the free dot menu by project zero, select add channel, I'm now going to create a new channel here. And this is all going to be around the first stage of our project, and that will be requirements gathering. So in here, I can put the channel name as requirements gathering. Again, I could include a description if I thought it would help people understand what it's for. And the privacy will be standard, meaning everyone in my team will have access to our requirements gathering channel. I can also check this box to ensure that everyone sees this in their team list. It doesn't get hidden by teams as our Microsoft team and project also grows. So I'm going to go ahead and select add. Now inside of our new channel, we see much the same. A new post where we can have dedicated posts for requirements gathering and a files tab, which now has a structure. Now again, I could come in here and create another folder structure and in requirements gathering, I would expect it to see a requirements definition area. So we can include all of our files to do with requirements definition and so forth. And again, you can create the structure that you would prefer. But considering channels, you can break down those structures, but we also have some other things to consider. For example, we might want to have a planning channel dedicated to all around the plan and the actions around that plan as well. So let's go ahead and create a new channel and call it planning. Again, the security or privacy will be marked as standard, but importantly in our planning channel here, we're gonna to want to have a project plan. Now, Microsoft Planner comes as part of Microsoft 365, meaning we can bring it in to each of our channels and have a project plan that we can actually allocate tasks, assign them to people inside of our team, and also have notifications and charts and so forth. To add it into our channel here for planning, I'm gonna go and click on the plus icon, and in here, I'm going to search for an app called Tasks by Planner and To Do. Now, as we search the word task, we'll see it right at the top. And then when we click into it, we'll be prompted to give the plan a new name. So what we can then do is we'll note it here, rather than just calling it a tab name as tasks, we'll call it project zero planning. We'll then go ahead, leave it to be posted onto the channel and click save. Now we have our project zero planning. And this is Microsoft planner that we can now use to create tasks. It also means that in this scenario, I can also update the buckets. For example, the to-do is not particularly one I would want to use here. Maybe as we mentioned before, the first phase of our plan is to consider requirements gathering. So I'll put a bucket named requirements gathering. Our second bucket, well, that could relate to the design. So project zero needs a design, right? So we're gonna put design. Now in each of these buckets, we can then begin to allocate tasks. Here I'll add a task name and we'll set this as define requirements. We can set a due date, which I'm going to be setting for the end of next month. And I could also assign this task. Now at this point, there's only me in the team. So I only see this account for Alex, which I'm logged into. So I'm not going to assign this to anyone yet, but I'm going to get it ready to go. Click on add task. I can then click into define requirements and add further detail maybe the start date, the priority, any additional notes, or even create a checklist. So a great way to add more tasks and more buckets to build out your project plan using Microsoft Planner. And not only that, as your project grows and your plan grows, on the right-hand side, you'll see a charts button and a schedule to give you even more insight into your plan. And not only that, the wider team has this capability to keep on top of all their tracks in your Microsoft team and in your project. So we now have a selection of channels. We have a project plan. We also have the files tabs preset up with the folder structures we want our team to work in. But what I did mention at the start of this video is can we create a list? And that list might be an issue tracker. In the issue tracker, I also want to be alerted when new issues on the project occur. Or maybe I want to alert others to that as well. Now, in our general, that sounds like a great place that we could add our issue tracker. So again, I'm going to go to the top and click on the plus button, and I'm going to now select lists. If you can't find it, just type in the word lists, and then you'll find this icon here. Lists is Microsoft Lists, and that allows us, when we click on save, to add a list into our general 
channel. So I'm going to go ahead and select create a list and we can now create it from a template or we can create one from scratch. We can even import it from Excel or a CSV and have all the hard work done for us. But here I would like an issue tracker and the good news is Microsoft already has a template for that. So I'm going to select issue tracker. You'll then see a preview of what their issue tracker looks like. The issue, the description, the priority status and so forth. I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to click on Use Template. We can then give it a name, so Issue Tracker. Actually, I'm going to call it the Project Zero Issue Tracker because that's nice and clear. If I use Microsoft Lists elsewhere, that will be nicely defined by its name. We can again give it a description, an icon, and also choose a color. I'll select Navy Blue and then click on Create. And we'll now have a Project Issue Tracker already created for us. So as issues come up on this project, you and the wider team that have access to your Microsoft team can drop in, select new, and they can log a new issue on the tracker and effectively provide all of that additional context to run your project. Now in terms of this here, what I'd also like to do is have an alert because this is great to collect, but I don't want to spend all day going in here and refreshing the screen to try and understand if new issues have occurred, which is also feasible to do. What you can do here is firstly click on the free dot menu and go to open in SharePoint. Now, as I mentioned, the Microsoft list lives effectively in Microsoft 365 under a SharePoint site. That means that under this scenario, we can actually go to the automate tab. We can set rules and I can create a new rule. That rule could be when a new item is created on our issue tracker, I want to be notified. And all I would need to do here is effectively send an email to either an individual by name, and I can search from my own account, I'm using an account for Alex, and select that here. Alternatively, I could actually clear that, and I can actually set it to the person it's been assigned to in the list. So when someone creates that issue, there is a column called assigned to, and once that person is defined, an email will be immediately sent to that person to advise them that an issue has been assigned to them. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Create, and that rule has now been applied. And again, I could create additional rules for those alerts to be sent based on different activity. Maybe data in a column change, maybe a status was updated. Well, I could again say when the status changes to a specific value, and again, I can select it to blocked, send an email to me as a project manager. So effectively, I know that this has been blocked and work needs to be done to move that on. So now we have an issue tracker. We also have the automated alerts, meaning you're going to get email alerts when important things change. Let's go back into our Microsoft team and also consider then how we can begin to also file email into our Microsoft team, because as a project, we're going to be sending lots of emails. Well, to do that, what we can then do is go into Outlook. So in Outlook, I have an email here relating to a project and it has an association to Project Zero. So I want to share this with the project team that also exists in our team. All I need to do is highlight the email, select Share to Teams, and I can actually file this email into the team. You can already see recent locations being requirements gathering for Project Zero. But I could also search for the word zero and you can see it picks up the general project zero channel. If I select that here, I can also type a message. Once that's done, click on share and that email will find its way into our Microsoft team. So me and the team can pick it up and also respond and make comments on it. So if I close this down here and go back into our team and we look back at our general channel, there is our filed email. We can see it in place. The team can click on reply and reply to that in place. That doesn't send an email response, but it does mean that you and your team can communicate about how the best way you can go back to this query. And also we may need to do announcements. For example, in our requirements gathering, we need to move this forward. So let's go ahead and create a new conversation and click on the A and the little pencil button on the left hand side. Under the drop down new conversation, change that to announcement and you can now announce something to the team and they will be notified that you've added a new announcement. And once we've done that, we'll go ahead and click on the send button and that now will announce itself into that channel and also the team will be aware of that. 
So nice and straightforward to add an announcement. And then of course, finally, we need to bring our team in. A project area with just me in is a lonely place to be. So all I need to do is click on the freed up menu next to project zero, select add member, and I can now begin adding our team into the project. Here I'm gonna bring in Adele, as we mentioned earlier, and click on add. Now Adele has been added into that team. She has access to all the channels, all the files, the project plan, and also can see those filed emails. Now once I've done that, I may wanna add someone else. Nestor is the director of the company. I'm gonna add in Nestor. But the difference here is that Nestor, he needs an additional privilege. Nestor is gonna help me manage this team. So to do that, I can just click in the drop down by member, select owner, and I can promote Nestor to become an owner so he can also add and remove others and also take control of this project area and make additional changes where it's required. So we've now added two people into our team and we're now ready to go. So we now have a great area for you to work on in your project. We have our channels, we have our file and folder structures, we have our project plan running in planner, we have an issue list and a tracker that sends alerts to the relevant people when new items have been updated or also changed. And we also have announcements that we've set up ready to go and added our team members in. And you can use a range of these areas here to improve how you're going to work and create your amazing Microsoft team for your own project.